Aviation is now an integral part of our economy, contributing over 3% to Singapore's GDP in direct value added. As an enabler of people and business connections, aviation has a far-reaching impact on the economy and society. Through aviation, Singapore is connected to the international networks of enterprise, talent and ideas. Singapore could not have become the global city it is today without a good airport with superior air connectivity. This has played an integral role in attracting over 7,000 MNCs and over a third of Fortune 500 corporations to base themselves here. Aviation has also enriched the lives of Singaporeans. Our air connectivity and rising income have enabled our people to travel freely, widely, and from a very young age. That was not always so. I took my first plane ride at the age of 25, and then only to Kuala Lumpur for the Ford Foundation scholarship interview. While Singapore has built a good track record, we should also be mindful of the challenges ahead. Aviation is a dynamic, fast-changing industry. In recent years, we have seen new generation planes like the Airbus 380 and Boeing Dreamliner, which can carry more passengers and fly further distances, potentially bypassing Singapore. Companies with new business models are emerging and aspiring to displace the leaders of today, as seen in the competition between the low-cost carriers and traditional full-service carriers. Our success in international aviation has made us a model for others to follow. Many countries have aspirations to be a major aviation hub and have taken similar steps as us in investing in aviation infrastructure and liberalizing their policies. Gret Lindsay, in his book, Aerotropolis, The Way We Will Live Next, described how Dubai was developing an aerotropolis, a city planned around the airport. And there are many other examples in the Middle East, China, India, and Latin America. Every aerotropolis is locked in competition with every other one. Everyone wants to be a hub. Nobody wants to be spokes. Singapore had a head start as an aviation hub, but other countries and new hubs are fast catching up. We therefore cannot rest on our laurels, but we have to constantly innovate, stay nimble, and push the boundaries. It is for this reason that we decided to corporatize Changi Airport in 2009, so that it would have the autonomy and flexibility to innovate and respond quickly to the rapidly changing needs of the market. After corporatization, the Changi Airport Group, or CAG, rolled out the Changi Airport Growth Initiative to enable the CAG to work more closely with its airline partners. CAG seeks to understand their unique operational requirements and to customize solutions for them. To date, the CAG initiative has helped to attract a number of new airlines to Changi. This in turn has boosted Changi's air traffic network and enhanced its status as an international air hub. We also need to continue our strategy of open skies and pursuing links with as many cities as we can. A liberal air services framework will allow carriers to respond to changing consumer demands as and when they arise. To date, Singapore has air services agreements with more than 100 countries, of which more than a third are open skies agreements. Changi Airport itself is linked to over 200 cities. The key factor behind the success of our aviation industry is people. People like Mr. J.Y. Pillay, who grew Singapore Airlines into a global brand, and the late Mr. Sim Ki Boon, who spearheaded the biggest civil project in Singapore then, the construction and management of Changi Airport. We need to ignite new passion for aviation among our youth and develop them. We need to contribute to invest in the people who are the foundation of our aviation industry. 
We must also develop a core of aviation professionals who can contribute in international fora and be at the forefront in addressing future challenges in air traffic management and aviation security to strengthen the aviation industry. I'm glad the Aviation Manpower Program, launched by CAAS last year, will provide scholarships to young talent for further studies, fund skills, upgrading, and executive development programs, as well as student outreach activities. Singapore has made great strides in aviation. Tonight, I congratulate the Singapore aviation industry for its achievements over the last 100 years. I also thank the many outstanding individuals and teams who helped us succeed. The prospects for the Singapore aviation industry are bright. I'm confident that the Singapore aviation industry will continue to soar.